In this video, I'm going to explain how you can install a front-end application that is accessing your NodeHive backend. This video is specifically interesting for Next.js developers because our um, starter we're going to use in this video is built on Next.js 14 app router. So let's get started. We offer a NodeHive Next.js minimal starter. And this is called minimal because it really only comes with the bare bone features needed to actually connect the front end with the NodeHive backend. And it's the ideal starter to actually build whatever project you want and get all the benefits of um, yeah, easy configuration to access the backend actually. So how can you do that? So here we have in installation instructions. You simply run that command. Um, I already did that here. So I already basically made a clone of it. Now I open up the code editor. And there are some things that are important now that we need to configure. Um, first of all, it's the nodehive.example. When you open up that, you can make a copy. I already did that to .env.local. And then you have to configure some variables here. And since we are uh, using nodehive, actually the nodehive backend will help you get the right variables and the right configurations. So to do that, I can access a feature in nodehive um, under settings, then front-end environment variables. Then I can se select my space. In this case, I select a new website. And here I can simply copy paste um, and add that to my .env local. Quick explanation what's in here. First of all, it's the backend URLs for, um, yeah, basically the Drupal backend URLs to access the JSON API. Then it's also the next image domain, that's for the next JS application. Then also the public frontend base. This URL, if you deploy it to production, of course, you want to change that to, um, to your production URL, basically. But then here we have the next public node hive space name. The space name is just um, basically naming to the cookies and some internal stuff in node hive. Then here you can select the node hive space. So here we have several spaces. At the moment it's two. If you add multiple frontends, it's actually this ID. Uh, in this demo, I simply want to use. Um, space number one. And then also what is actually the start page? Um, in our case, the start page would be node one. This is this new, this is the new page. So this is the node one. And then uh, also the default language. Also here I added the node TLS reject unauthorized. This helps me when I um, develop locally that node will me allow to use unsecure HTTPS connections because locally um, this can be the case. By the way, if you are curious how to spin up the local backend, I created another video for that. So this video is basically the follow-up of the first one um, where I explain in detail how you can install the backend locally. If you would use a our SaaS product, um, this, the only thing you need to do is basically change that to um, the SaaS uh, URL. And for example, it could be your uh, backend.nodehive.app. Just replace the correct variables and then everything work automatically. All right, so we have the .f, .env local. Now I'm going to start the, um, the server. Of course, you have to do npm install and uh, basically reload all the uh, dependencies. Um, here you see we are running on localhost 3000. 
um, there is one important thing that we need to do and it's called the, we have to install a certificate locally which maps port 3010 to 3000 so that we are able to use the front-end application that runs on port 3000 um, to be accessed on port 3010 with HTTPS. So um, let's demo that uh, rather quickly. So now this one is running, so I open this one up. That works fine. But now if I want to access with HTTPS, this is not possible. But now since I started this command here, um, it allows me to access it locally. And we need that so that the browser allows me to run the front end inside an iframe to actually enable these features here. Yeah, uh, if you are curious and want to know how to use these commands, we also made a documentation about it. Let's quickly look that up. So notive, docs.notive.com. And then we have here, um, I think it's called Visual Editor. And on here, and here we have this configure SSL on localhost. Just copy paste that, and then it will work with this mapping. By the way, you can also adjust, of course, these um, ports depending on your um, given situation. So with that said, uh, we have now, and maybe I switch that here, we have now the front end up and running. So now let's create a new page. For that, I can toggle content browser. Uh, here again, I have access to my multiple spaces. Now I add an additional page my new page i link it here to the menu hit save i publish it then i open up the editor and here again i have my new page so i can also very quickly go back and forth directly in the visual editor that's fine so content management works now i want to add additional features how can i do that so now if you look into the next application a little bit more, we have here the source folder and then we have the app folder. And in here we have, since it's the multilingual um, setup, so let me open up the site. So here we have the language and then we have the slog processing. I won't go into the very, very details here, but just rough overview, we actually instantiate the NodeHive client. So there is a, the NodeHive client here, which where we can then create a server client, which then is uh, provides a function that is called get resource by slug. So basically, we we go into uh, we just put the slug into here. And it will give me back the entity. So basically the content structure of the backend, which is exactly this JSON blob here. Then we can do um, basically spin up our front-end components. In this case, um, we use the node and we just pass the node to the node component. So I open up the component. We have the node component here. And then here, um, so it's possible to add several node instances like article, projects, whatever content type you configured. Um, but let's go into the page. So this is the page and here is exactly that template you see here. So if I add whatever here, so this is adding here, of course. Um, so the, the starter, the minimal starter comes with uh, Tailwind predefined. So let's say text red 500. And yeah, basically I can now start coding it. So the power of um, Drupal Notive Headless CMS is about building structured content. So what I want to demo quickly and just give you um, a very small insight what's the capabilities of it. So I will configure now the content type page. So I go to content types, basic page, and now I'm able to content modeling that specific 
content basically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new field and let's call it simply subtitle. It will be a super simple plain text. Yeah, plain text. And then I just continue. I could configure that, but I keep it with the defaults. And now I created a new field called subtitles. When I now go back to my site, so I open up the editor. Now I edit this page. I'm now able to set a subtitle. So this is my subtitle, hit save. And then obviously I'm not rendering it here, but the subtitle is now here available as a field. So if I want to output that here, add node.data.field subtitle, and then I can basically uh, output my, um, yeah, my content. Class name, uh, text to Excel and voila, I can actually start building my site. And yeah, again, I mean, this is very convenient. You just go to the, basically to your fields, create a new field. Um, I can, uh, for example, also add a, f a formatted text. Um, so this is basically, we could say description, hit save. So now I have a description. If I go back to my editor, I edit this page. You see, I have it here available. Now I want to rearrange this form. That's also uh, very easy to do. For that, I go again back to my content type. And instead of manage feature, I manage the form display. So here I'm able to yeah, drag and drop that fields to the place I want to put it. So I hit save. Now I go back, edit the page and voila, here is my description. And again, if I look at my JSON output, I have now the field description here with the value. Um, and there are also different formats, but I uh, recommend to use in this case processed. To summarize here, um, we installed the NodeHive Next.js minimal starter, connected it with the backend. Uh, then we basically checked out the visual editor. We added a new field. We saw that the JSON output gets populated automatically. Then we could use that variable in the way we want now in the front end. So it's very quick and fast and easy to use. Um, yeah, so... This was just a demo of the very service of what's possible with uh, NoteHive and the uh, starter templates. Uh, I will create much, much more videos in the future. So subscribe to the channel. You don't miss that. And also subscribe to the newsletter, uh, notehive.com slash newsletter. Please also consider uh, using our SaaS service if you don't want to care about the hosting and uh, also updating, patching the site when needed. Even though the backend is completely open source, go with it, do whatever uh, you do with it. Happy to get some feedback and until then, have a good one.